Well, we begin this afternoon in Syria. President Obama and his cabinet are still deliberating on whether or not the U.S. should become military, militarily involved in Syria, and if so, to what extent. Earlier this afternoon, Secretary of State John Kerry addressed the public, reiterating administration rhetoric against President Bashar al-Assad and his military's alleged use of chemical weapons. Listen. So our concern is not just about some far-off land oceans away. That's not what this is about. Our concern with the cause of the defenseless people of Syria is about choices that will directly affect our role in the world and our interests in the world. It is also profoundly about who we are. We are the United States of America. We are the country that has tried, not always successfully, but always tried to honor a set of universal values around which we have organized our lives and our aspirations. Now, Kerry went on to say that the precedent that the international community sets in Syria now will dictate how future regimes around the world treat their people. But as of right now, President Obama says no final decision has been made. I have said before, uh, and I meant what I said, that uh, the, the world has an obligation to make sure that we maintain the norm against the use of chemical weapons. Now, I have not made a final decision uh, about uh, various actions that might be taken to help enforce that norm. Meanwhile, a new NBC poll says that 80 percent of Americans believe President Obama should seek congressional approval before making any decision on whether or not to intervene. And former Congressman Dennis Kucinich tweeted recently, quote, UK votes no on Syria attack. Barack Obama, you said POTUS can't unilaterally act, attack. Don't betray Constitution, no war on Syria. Also out today, the Obama administration released documents supporting allegations that Assad's regime was responsible for the chemical attacks that killed some 1,429 civilians, including 426 children, and sickened over 3,600 people. Earlier today, I was joined by Phyllis Bennis. She's a director of the New Internationalism Project at the Institute for Policy Studies. And I started off by asking her whether the impassioned speeches by Kerry and Obama earlier this afternoon constituted a declaration of war. Actually not. I was afraid it might be that. But I think they're actually being a bit cautious, seeing both the public opposition, which is, depending on which poll you read, somewhere between 50 to 60 to even almost close to 70 percent opposition at various points, congressional unease because he's not consulting with Congress, and the international opposition with the Brits pulling out. So all of this, I think, is making the Obama administration more cautious than they might have been. The report that came out today is also not nearly as definitive as Secretary Kerry's passion would have indicated. What they basically say is that they are confident, they have high confidence, that the Syrian government carried out the attack. That the possibility that it was the opposition, they say, is highly unlikely. That's a vast difference than saying it's absolute, it's a slam dunk, if we want to use the term. Uh, so I think they are being very cautious here. The memory of 10 years ago, when Barack Obama was one of so many people who said that this was a dumb war, it was a war based on lies, that has to be sitting very heavily on them right now. And they're not the only ones that have expressed this type of caution. The UK Parliament has also been expressing this type of caution, saying that they do not want to get involved with a very narrow vote. And also NATO has said that it will not take part in these strikes. So talk about how that changes the dynamic here. This changes the political dynamic enormously. It does not change the legal reality. We should recognize that. With or without the Brits, with or without NATO, with or without the French, a U.S. strike would be illegal under international law because international law, which is vague about all kinds of things, is very clear on one question. When is the use of force legal? And it's, it's legal only in two very narrow instances. One is immediate self-defense. That's not an issue here. The U.S. has not been attacked, and even the Obama administration is not claiming that. The other is if the Security Council acknowledges and agrees and, and endorses the use of military force. That hasn't happened. We know it's not going to happen. Russia and China have made clear they would veto. So in this situation, any other use of force would be illegal. We hear discussion of the so-called Kosovo model, the Kosovo 
precedent of 1999. The problem is they could use that. They could reference that and say, well, we'll do what we did in Kosovo. The problem was what they did in Kosovo was illegal. They said, we can't get Security Council permission because we know that Russia will, will veto, so we won't ask the Security Council. Instead, we'll ask the NATO High Command. The problem is the NATO High Command isn't authorized to make that decision. NATO is a military institution. You ask them and they're going to say, sure, we need military force. But that's like the hammer and the nail. If you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. If you're NATO, everything looks like it requires military intervention. International law doesn't say you have to get permission from the Security Council, unless you don't, and then you can get permission from London or from NATO or from somebody else. You can't do that. And we're also hearing that same rhetoric from former President Jimmy Carter. I want to bring up a, a, a quote that he said today, and then I'll go ahead and get your opinion on it. He said, quote, a punitive military response without a UN Security Council mandate or broad support from NATO and the Arab League would be illegal under international law and unlikely to alter the course of the war. It will only harden existing positions and postpone a sorely needed political process to put an end to the catastrophic violence. Now, what do you make of that analysis? Well, I think it's a very important analysis. I agree with every bit of it, except when he said that it would be illegal unless they had either the Security Council or widespread popular support and the Arab League. Widespread popular support and the Arab League don't cut it. It's only the Security Council that is authorized to give that permission. And I think that President Carter knows that. I'm guessing that was a slip. But his assessment of what would be the impact, I think, is very important. It will not protect Syrians from any kind of future attack. It will not bring the end of war closer. What we need right now is not more militarization, but less militarization and more talking. We saw in the first months of the, the negotiation efforts that Russia pulled back. Russia said, our side is losing, so we don't want to talk right now. That led to the collapse of the first effort. In the second effort, the U.S. is now saying, our side is losing, so we don't want to talk now. The problem is both sides need to talk. We need Russia and the U.S. talking to each other, and both of them need to bring their junior partners along. So Russia needs to be there with Iran and Syria and Iraq. The U.S. needs to be there with Saudi Arabia and Qatar and Turkey and Jordan, and they need to come together and say, we are going to force our respective sides of the civil war to come together. There are five wars being waged in Syria right now, only one of them, the civil war. The others are regional wars and global wars and religious wars, and they're all being fought to the last Syrian. It's crucial that we keep in mind what's happening to the people of Syria through all this. More bombing from the United States is not going to make it better. It's going to make it worse. And one of the really interesting things that came out last year in the midst of the Libyan crisis was General Martin Dempsey saying that Libya and Syria are two fundamentally different things in the way that we approach those countries because they are so fundamentally different. I want to play a clip from Martin Dempsey talking one year ago, and then we'll talk about that in terms of today. You believe if you needed to, you could militarily intervene in, in Syria in the same way you did in Libya? Not the same way we did in Libya. I mean, Syria is a very different challenge. It's a different challenge, as you described it, geographically. It's a different challenge in terms of the capability of the Syrian military. They, they are very capable. Uh, they have a very sophisticated integrated air defense system, for example. They have chemical and biological weapons. Now, they haven't demonstrated any interest or any intent to use those, but it is a very different military problem. A very different military problem indeed, whether that was a year ago or today, that fact still stands. The other fact that stands today that didn't stand a year ago is that 100,000 people are dead. Can you talk about this and, and what he said and whether the U.S. is still taking these differences between Libya and, and Syria into context here? I'm afraid the U.S. is not taking into context those differences, and I'm afraid that the notion of 100,000 dead Syrians, more than a third of them civilians, uh, is not the primary question on the agenda. The primary question seems to be political, and that's a serious problem. What we're looking at is, and General Dempsey was absolutely right, it's fine for President Obama or anybody else in the administration to say, this is not about regime change. Libya wasn't about regime change until it was. This is not about a major intervention. This is only a narrow set of surgical strikes. Well, that's fine until they retaliate. And then what happens? You know, imagine if there's a small surgical strike against Syria, and Syria then retaliates against a U.S. base in one of the neighboring countries, against Israel, against a U.S. plane, against who knows what. 
Do we really think the U.S. is then going to sit back and say, well, no, we said that this was only a one-off. We're, we're not going to respond. That pulls the U.N. in, uh, sorry, that pulls the U.S. when the U.N. is being excluded, that pulls the U.S. directly into a civil war with great, great danger for the region, for the world. Absolutely, Phyllis. We have so many things coming out right now, so many different parts of information that we're only starting to put this bigger picture together. And I appreciate you coming in and helping us build that narrative. Phyllis Bennis, Director of the New Internationalism Project at the Institute for Policy Studies. Thank you so much. Thank you.